Okay, this next section is perhaps the most important part of the tutorial. So far, everything that we've done uh, has been about identifying, explaining uh, little bits of the Rebel program programming language. Uh, in the next section, what we're going to do is really explore how those building blocks um, go together to create complete programs. Um, and there are a number of them here you can download in this little zip file. There are also some conventions in these examples that we have to use to make sure that the examples fit correctly on a web page um, so they can be copied and pasted uh, into the Rebel interpreter um, and so that the web page doesn't get too big. Uh, one of the things is uh, multi-line strings uh, are used uh, uh, often to separate strings that would be uh, too long for a single line. We've seen the curly braces before. That's really important in Rebel. Uh, they work the same as quotes, except they take multi-line input, so you can have as many lines as you want. And this little trim function will trim off the extra space and, and uh, line endings. So this little string here is the same as this string. Uh, we do the same thing with blocks of information. Uh, you've seen the join command. Also, the rejoin command is used quite a bit, and it joins together either text or blocks of information. So in this case, these bits of text are all joined together so that it forms that one single line. Um, and uh, this, uh, this block, for example, multi-line multi block, um, is also the same as this block. And you'll see in blocks, it's important to see that blocks typically are indented uh, so that you can see where they start and end. And so this join ends with a block ending at the same level of indentation and all the stuff included in it is indented so you can see uh, visually that separation a little more easily. Okay, the first example here is a simple little email client. We're going to create a little program that uh, helps us send and retrieve email. Um, you can see the very first line um, has the rebel header, required rebel header. If we're going to save this to a text file, that needs to be included. Um, and the title little email client will appear in the program header bar. Uh, you can see this program is documented line by line as are all the examples uh, to show what every single bit of code does. The um, very first um, line of code creates a GUI and that includes everything in this block. You can see it's all been indented so the end of that GUI block ends down here. So there are a number of things included in the GUI the first of which um, is uh, a header. This H1 is just a uh, large block of text that appears in the GUI. Uh, we'll use that as a label. I'm going to show that this is the ascend email um, part of the program. Um, and the first uh, item in there is a field with the default text, recipients at website.com, to let the users know what should be typed into that field. And we're going to give a label to that field, and we'll call it address. Um, and then uh, next is another field with the default text subject, and we're assigning the word subject to that. Um, and then there's a, a larger multi-line text area, which uh, put the words or the word body in, and we're assigning the word body to that. Um, and then a button, um, BTN is just a little bit more uh, modern looking button than the B-U-T-T-O-N button that we've seen so far. Um, it's sort of rounded and um, looks a little more modern. Um, and on that button is the word send. And then we have an action block after that. So that whenever the button is pressed, clicked on, it will do this code. And you can see again the level in indentation there is uh, the same. It's, it ends. Uh, when that bracket at the same level of indentation is closed up. Um, so when that button is pressed, this is what's, what gets executed. Um, the first line really does all the work. This is the send function that sends an email, and it's got a subject refinement, so it's going to let us put a subject in the, uh, in the email. And it takes three parameters. So Rebel's looking now for three parameters, the next three things are going to be parameters, the first of which is a little complex. What's going to happen is we're going to create an, <coughs> an email type of data, and that data is going to be gotten from the item in the GUI called address. We labeled this field up here address, and we're taking the text, that refinement text, let's just refer to whatever text is currently included in the 
in the uh, field. So the very first argument for our send function is an email address that's gotten from that text. To email just makes just uh, make sure that Rebel is using that data, that text data, as an email format. Uh, the next the next argument is um, some text which is gotten from the body, um, the body uh, multi-line text entry. So that's the text that's included in that body. And then and the third uh, argument parameter for the send function is uh, the subject that was typed into the field that we labeled as subject. So again, this is going to send using this uh, this format, which requires three items. The first of which is the email address gotten from the address um, field, then the text from the body field, and then the text from the subject field. Um, when that's done, uh, after that's completed, the user will be alerted with a message that the message has been sent. Um, so that's the, the first part of the program, and next we have another header uh, that lets us know that this section of the program, or this section of the GUI, will let us send or read, read an email. And again, we have another field with default um, uh, text. It shows the user what format to type into. Um, that's going to be an email box with the username and password at a given website. We call that uh, field mailbox. And again, we have another button, ETN, with the text read. Um, and when we click on that button, we execute what's in this block. And again, indentation level is the same. That's where it ends. So it's easy to see. Um, and when that button is clicked, uh, the editor is run, and what's put in that editor is the data that's read from a URL that's gotten from the mailbox field. Whatever text is put in that mailbox field um, is converted to an ER or a URL, then read, and then that is put into the editor. And the way all these uh, rebel functions work is type in a function editor in this case and that takes a parameter so this is the parameter the way it works is it gets one parameter because editor is looking for a parameter the next thing to come along is a read function well read will return something but it needs some information and so what happens there it takes a parameter also and um, so it's looking to this next thing that it sees and to our to URL needs a parameter so it gets that information from mailbox text, uh, the mailbox text. Run this. Copy and we don't need the header when we just copy it into the level interpreter. If we want to send it, we're going to get an error here because we don't have a real email address and a user. But otherwise, if you have uh, this set up, mm -hmm. uh, you do need. Let's have this here. That's good. Close. If you do get an error when you're running GUIs, Type this uh, view, and that will close the, the um, GUI. In order to set this up, we need to go to the desktop. Uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, I have just a generic email setting in here. But for this to work, you do need to have correct uh, user SMT and POP, pop server uh, set in your preferences. And you should notice, when you look at the uh, code down here, I include the same co code without comments. This is a really small little program. To do this in any other programming language would, would take quite a bit more code. It was great that way.